Hello guys welcome back to our anime explainer. Guys please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Today is explanation of upcoming episode of Soul Land 2 Peerless Tang Men based on novel. So let's start. Morning. Amidst the misty gates of Shrek Academy, a group of people slowly walked out. From their ages, it was clear that they were students of Shrek Academy. However, they weren't wearing their uniforms today. Some of the students were wearing clothes made of cloth, while some were wearing ones with flowery designs, all of them wore different things. Flowery clothes weren't necessarily beautiful, and ones made of cloth didn't necessarily represent mediocrity. The most obvious delegates of the two types of clothes were Yarrow Haoshuan and Jiang Nan Nan. As a result of his skinny body, Yarrow Haoshuan looked somewhat wretched with his flowery clothes on. On the other hand, the cloth-wearing Jiang Nan Nan looked incomparably elegant. Hui Yu Hao no longer wore the set of clothes his brought to the academy. However, he treasured the set of clothes his mother had made for him, and had thus placed them in the twenty-four moonlit bridges. Currently, he was no longer the poor young boy who didn't have a single penny to his name. The black set of warrior's robes he wore made him look extremely nimble. Due to the changes that had occurred to his body, he looked fourteen to fifteen years old, even though he wasn't even thirteen yet. The well-proportioned muscles underneath his robes seemed to contain an explosive amount of power within them. Wang Dong was no longer as tall as Hui Yu Hao, but his slender body, elegant aura, and clever yet beautiful eyes were extremely captivating. If the prettiest among the girls was Jiang Nan Nan, he was definitely the most handsome of the boys. In terms of pure appearance, he was comparable to Jiang Nan Nan. The sun had just risen from the east, but they were already leaving the academy. This group of people naturally consisted of the official and preparatory teams of the Shrek's seven monsters. Elder Xian wasn't the only person leading the group, Hu Yu Hao's teacher, Wang Yang, also tagged along with them. The group of almost twenty people people walked together in twos and threes, but Elder Xian was still as messy as ever, with his bottle gourd and chicken legs in his hands. The foodstuffs he ate seemed to alternate between chicken legs and chicken wings, and he didn't seem to ever get bored of eating them. Possibly due to the fact that he wanted to eat and drink, Elder Xian didn't walk especially quickly, he walked at around the pace of an ordinary person. This gave the entire group a relaxing and leisurely feeling. With their physical abilities, walking at such a pace was simply a type of pleasure. Compared to when he had just entered the academy, Hui Yu Hao had experienced an earth-shattering transformation. He'd entered by relying on the Tang Sex special quota, and not only did he have a pitiful amount of soul power, he didn't even have a single attacking skill. His body was as frail as an ordinary person's. The fact that he was able to completely change everything within a short year couldn't be fully attributed to his two intelligent soul rings, his painstaking hard work couldn't be ignored. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that Hu Yu Hao had put in more than twice the amount of effort as the other students. He didn't even have any time to rest. Wang Dong glared at him unhappily. I'm gonna die of exhaustion. What bad luck I have, having a roommate like you. Hui Yu Hao chuckled. Haven't you felt that you've been improving so quickly with me urging you on? You should be grateful to me. Wang Dong snorted. I'd rather rest for a bit. Come. You're not allowed to use spiritual detection. With that, Wang Dong ran straight towards Hui Yu Hao. However, instead of colliding with him, he flickered around the latter's body at a rapid rate. Hui Yu Hao continued to slowly follow the group, but they were at the very back of the group, and thus wouldn't be afraid of anyone noticing them. Hui Yu Hao raised his hand, then started to make pushing and pulling motions with a regular tempo. A pale, white light could faintly be seen at the tops of his hands. Wang Dong immediately slowed down. Evidently, he'd sensed what Hui Yu Hao was doing. However, he immediately accelerated using his soul power, doing his best to maintain his current level of speed. Whilst walking together with Bei Bei, he Kai Tu turned around. He saw Hui Yu Hao and Wang Dong with a weird look in his eyes and whispered, Senior brother, isn't Wang Dong using the ghost shadow perplexing tracks? What's Hui Yu Hao doing? She was truly somewhat envious of the intimate relationship that Wang Dong had with Hui Yu Hao. In the past, 
she'd thought that it would be much easier for her to mix around with guys due to the fact that she was a girl. However, the intimacy that Hua Yu Hao had with Wang Dong was evidently much deeper than the friendship she had with them. He Kai Tu gave a silly laugh, since the two of them can complete a fusion skill, they are naturally close to each other. However, a martial fusion between two people who don't share the same bloodline is quite rare. Xiao Xiao, why don't I help you out? I don't know how to use the controlling crane capturing dragon, but I can use some of my weaker soul tools to help you train your ghost shadow perplexing track. How about that? Though she felt that he Kai Tu's extremely rugged body and black skin looked somewhat fierce, Xiao Xiao was always a very kind and straightforward person in her interactions with other people. Thus, she nodded, sure. I want to train hard as well. Otherwise, I'd deserve to be eliminated if I lagged behind them. Seeing that Hua Yu Hao and the rest were working hard, Xu Sansha immediately devised a plan. He smiled mischievously, Nan Nan, see how hard they're working. Why don't we practice as well? Look, my hard and thick skin is great for you to practice your throwing skills. Naturally, I can take on your grappling skills as well. His thirsty face was clearly telling Jiang Nan Nan, grapple me, grapple me. Jiang Nan Nan turned around and looked at him with an icy look in her eyes, it'd be better for you to scram than anything else. Xu Sancha immediately contorted his face and said indignantly, Nan Nan, just what can I do to make you understand my heart? I'm sincere towards you. Just how can I make you be willing to be together with me? Jiang Nan Nan stared at him hatefully, and a tint of red that arose from either bashfulness or anger faintly appeared on her exceptionally beautiful face. I won't be together with the hedonistic son of a rich family like you no matter what. A beast's intentions still come from a beast's heart. Stop bothering me. Also, I'm called Jiang Nan Nan. Please use my surname while referring to me. With that, she turned around and sped up, increasing the distance between her and Shusansha. Shusansha covered his face with his hands and cried out sorrowfully, Just let me die, die, die. Elder Xian, who was walking in front, suddenly staggered mysteriously. Then, he violently spat out the mouthful of wine he had in his mouth before glaring fiercely at Bei Bei and Shusansha. The two of them straightened their faces, not daring to say anything more, okay. Come over. Elder Xian spat out a mouthful of saliva, then used his dirty, greasy sleeve to wipe his mouth before yelling out unhappily. The group of fourteen hurriedly stepped forward and formed a circle around him. Due to the fact that they were just training, Hua Yu Hao, Wang Dong, and Xiao Xiao were slightly out of breath. Xu Sancha still believed that it was Bei Bei's words that had triggered Elder Xian. Just wait for your scolding. He he. He whispered coldly. At this moment, Bei Bei didn't have any traces of a smile on his face. He had a ruthless look, and he mouthed a few words, since I'm going to get scolded, I'm gonna tell Jiang Nan Nan that you actually like guys. You were only chasing her to hide your real sexual orientation. Your sister, Xu Sanxi's face reddened. Bei Bei maintained full eye contact with him and said, I don't have a sister. Elder Xian suddenly ruffled his hair and glared at the two of them, if you two spout any more bullshit, I'm gonna beat you to the point where you won't even be able to take care of yourselves anymore. Ma Xiaodao laughed, Elder Xian, you're in perfectly good condition. However, our public morals are truly degenerating. They are so young, but they've inclinations like this. I suggest that the academy have a rectification campaign. Elder Xian's usual attitude wasn't too calm, but this was the first time they'd seen him act so seriously. Hu Yu Hao and the other six felt their hearts go cold, and they immediately curbed their previous laughter. Then, they paid full attention to Elder Xian. The seven from the inner courtyard seemed to know what Elder Xian was about to say, but they had solemn looks on their faces. Moreover, they radiated a unique sort of arrogance. Elder Xian said, Our Shrek Academy has existed for over 10,000 years. Normally, a powerful soul master can live for 200 years at the very least, while some can live even longer. Moreover, more and more students enter the inner courtyard every year. However, the total number of inner courtyard disciples who currently remain within the academy doesn't even reach a hundred. Do you know why this is the case? Xu Sancha said, it's because our seniors have graduated, right? Elder Xian shook his head, you're half right. There are a few disciples of the inner courtyard who leave the academy after graduating, but I now want to talk about the disciples who don't graduate. At this point, Elder Xian's voice clearly contained a few more traces of sorrow, 
they were all good kids. Though they weren't able to truly graduate, their names still exist within the school register. They took the ideals of the academy as their own ideals. It's not that they didn't have the strength to graduate, but because they died for the sake of the academy's ideals. In reality, there are many other students who have the qualifications to enter the inner courtyard. However, many of them choose to leave the academy after graduating from the outer courtyard. It's because entering the inner courtyard of Shrek Academy doesn't just signify that you'll get better things and better teaching. The weight of the responsibilities you'll receive will be similarly large. Those students who choose not to enter the inner courtyard admit that they aren't able to shoulder this task. After agreeing to keep this a secret, they leave. The Academy respects the choices of all of its students, but I want to say that every single student who has entered the inner courtyard to pursue their studies is a hero. Not a hero of the Academy, but a hero of the entire Doluo continent. The word hero was still very unfamiliar to the young Hui Yuhao and the rest. However, this word carried an indescribable weight to it when it came from Elder Xian's mouth. Every single disciple of the inner courtyard is a guardian and for them to graduate, they have to complete 30 assignments. These assignments not only test the strength of our disciples, but also their hearts. Our Shrek Academy doesn't want to nurture plain experts, but true talents who are willing to protect the peace and stability of the continent. What I want to tell you is this we are guardians, and also enforcers of the law. Everything that the Shrek guardians deal with is problematic, and extremely dangerous. There was even one occasion where we had to deal with a title dolor. A threat to your life could occur at any time. Because of this, the first thing you have to cautiously consider is whether you're willing to become a guardian. Furthermore, there isn't any compensation for a guardian. At that point, Elder Xian's solemn tone softened much more, he saw the gazes in the eyes of the seven members of the preparatory team. None of them had erratic looks in their eyes, but rather staunch and stubborn ones. They had undoubtedly made their decisions already. Dai Yuehang walked up to Elder Xian's side and said in a low voice, Junior brothers and sisters. I will tell you that, according to many of the seniors who have graduated, becoming a Shrek guardian is the greatest honor they have ever been given. Even if they've already graduated, many of them still do things that a guardian should do. To Evalders, we are the butcher's blade, to the weak and bullied, we are existences on the level of gods of kindness to them. There are uncountable numbers of people who have received the help of the Shrek guardians, and the act of helping them is the best way we can perfect our hearts. I've always believed that doing good deeds doesn't help others but ourselves. That feeling of satisfaction is something that's irreplacable. I'm very proud to have completed 28 assignments to this point. I'm already not far from 30. During this process, I've killed bandits who raped and pillaged, and government officials who didn't care for their citizens' lives. I've rescued children who were forced into slavery. The inner courtyard has a motto with great strength, comes great responsibility, and one's heart travels along the same path as the good deeds one performs. I'm willing to work together with you guys. The Sun Moon Empire, has never had a good relationship with our Star Luo Empire. In a situation like this, it's very hard for the two nations to cooperate. Whenever an empire sends its army out, those sly bastards will run over to the other side. Once, they even started a small-scale war between the two countries. However, they are still living fine now. Numbers won't be effective against them. There aren't even 300 of those bandits, but they are familiar with the terrain and they have many tricks. Because of this, a small team like us is better equipped to deal with them. These bandits call themselves the envoys of the death god, and they are supposedly headed by a relatively powerful evil soul master. Because of that, we can't be careless at all. A majority of you haven't killed a person before, and you're going to have a brand new experience now. I have to stress that the target of our assignment this time is to leave no survivors and completely eliminate them. There aren't any elderly, weak, women, or children in this group of bandits, and none of them are kind. Killing someone. This term was extremely foreign to Hui Yuhao and the rest. This was especially true for Hui Yuhao, Wang Dong, and Xiao Xiao, after all, they were only twelve. Their hearts started beating more rapidly after they heard the words killing someone. Ma Xiaodao smiled and looked towards Hui Yuhao, what? Scared. Don't wet yourself when the time comes, since nobody's going to wipe your butt for you. Hu Yu Hao's face immediately reddened. I'm not scared at all. He really didn't feel like he could lift his head in front of Ma Xiaodao. After the events of that day, a shadow had been cast over his heart. Ma Xiaodao laughed mischievously. It's good that you're not scared. 
The seven of us will be the main team during this mission, and you guys should do your best to protect yourselves while helping us from the side. These bandits are extremely unbridled, they've even titled themselves the Hand of Death. Within that vast, mountainous area, as long as you bring up the names Hand of Death, or Envoy of the Death God, the folk there will be scared witless. This mountainous area was formed 4,000 years ago, as a result of the collision between the two continents. Because of that, it's called the Mingdo Mountain Range. It has an extremely vast amount of mineral resources, and it produces extremely precious minerals. Because of that, the Star Luo and Sun Moon Empires have been continuously fighting over that mountain range for many years. The Star Luo Empire can give us a certain amount of help. Ever since Ma Xiaodao started giving her presentation regarding the Guardian mission, Elder Xian Hadden said another word, everything was in Ma Xiaotao's control. This was not only his confidence in Ma Xiaotao's ability to command a group, but it was also a way for her to polish her skills. It would be no good if a dragon lacked a leader. This Guardian mission was also the final learning curve for them all before the tournament started. I want Senior Sister Ma to take me with her. Wang Dong suddenly spoke before rushing to Ma Xiaotao's side. He continued talking as he smiled with admiration, Senior Sister Ma, I admire you the most. Can you take me along with you? Ma Xiaodao was stunned for a moment before she smiled and said, Fine, I'll take you with me. Dai Yueheng, you take Hu Yuhao with you. Let's go. As she spoke, she dragged Wang Dong's underarm up with her right hand and leapt up, taking off on their journey. Dai Yueheng and Ling Luo Chen also reacted in the same way, taking Hu Yuhao and Xiao Xiao respectively as they accelerated. Hu Yuhao was silently cursing in his heart. Since when did Wang Dong admire Ma Xiaodao? It actually seemed as though the ineffable hostility he had directed toward senior sister Ma before was real. What was that guy doing? Just because he knew this didn't mean that Ma Xiaodao knew it too. With Ma Xiaotao's help, Wang Dong now had a contented look on his face. He was extremely pleased with himself for what he'd done. Only he knew of the little scheme he'd concocted in his heart. The scenery on both sides of the road was a blur. Even with his spirit eyes, Hu Yu Hao still felt rather dizzy at the sight, Yu Hao, I heard that things aren't pleasant between you and my younger brother. Dai Yu Ehang asked Hu Yu Hao as he ran at full speed. Hu Yu Hao was taken aback, not because of what Dai Yu Ehang said, but because he could actually talk without the slightest hint of a tremble in his voice while running at such a high speed. He spoke just like he was holding a normal conversation. Dai Yu Ehang was really a person of formidable ability, yeah. Hu Yuheng ambiguously snorted out. Dai Yuheng had a sincere look on his face as he said, Even though I don't know how you guys became enemies, I think Hu Bin is in the wrong. As his elder brother, I'll apologize on his behalf. Hua Bin's been exceptionally talented ever since he was a kid, which eventually formed the arrogant attitude he has now. I've already reprimanded him before, and even slapped him across the face. Now that I think about it, that was the first time I've hit him. Let bygones be bygones. We're all in Shrek Academy to cultivate. You're now a member of the Guardian team, so we'll be brothers in arms and fellow soldiers from now on. I hope you won't hold any more grudges in your heart, and speak up if you need help. I'll repay what Huabin owes you on his behalf. Dai Yueheng smiled faintly and said, that would be for the best. Once we spend more time together, you'll get to know what kind of person I am. If Hu Yuhao had been who he was before he entered Shrek Academy, he might not have been able to mask his emotions, and would definitely have been at a loss when confronting Dai Yueheng. However, he had matured a lot over the past year. He knew that it was definitely not possible for him to get his revenge in such a short time. Since that was the case, he could only feign civility, senior brother, I heard senior sister Ma mention an evil soul master just now. What's that? Even though Hu Yuhao wasn't at Dai Yueheng's level of cultivation, he hardly needed to expend a great deal of effort in running now. As a result of that, he could still use soul power to protect his nose and mouth to speak. Dai Yueheng chuckled and said, I knew you were going to ask that question. Evil soul masters are also soul masters, but they are very scary. Even with his cultivation and self-confidence, Hu Yuhao actually caught a smudge of fear in Dai Yueheng's eyes when he uttered the words evil soul master. Hu Yuhao had originally asked this question without thinking it through. However, he was secretly shocked that an elite of Shrek Academy like Dai Yueheng was actually afraid of an evil soul master, evil soul masters have been in existence since long ago. It is said that ancestor Tang San, 
who was part of the first generation of Shrek's seven devils encountered a powerful evil soul master one year. What's more, that individual was also an evil Dolor. He was nevertheless able to obtain a domain type ability from the other party. A so called evil soul master is a soul master who has a few very exceptionally evil martial souls. Hui Yu Ha was shocked when he heard this and said, There are evil martial souls too. Dai Yuehang nodded and said, Martial souls can be anything. There's no distinction between good and evil if you view a martial soul on its own. But when the martial soul needs to be cultivated through special means, then that martial soul must definitely be evil. You'll understand when I give you an example. Hui Yu Hao suddenly felt enlightened, so it's like that. Thank you, senior brother. Even though he'd been on his guard around Dai Yuehang from the start, he couldn't help but admit that as an inner courtyard disciple, Dai Yuehang's knowledge and experience was far greater than his. Senior brother, I still have a question. Senior sister Ma said that we have to complete this mission in three days. We've been progressing very quickly, but our academy is in the Heavenly Soul Empire, bordering the central north region of Star Luo Empire. On the other hand, Mingdo Mountain is to the west of Star Luo Empire and is more than a thousand miles away. We might not be able to hurry there in three days even if we were to give it our all. Let's not even talk about killing the enemy. After a simple conversation, Hui Yu Hao gradually got used to talking with Dai Yuehang. At the same time, he did his best to suppress his hatred to the depths of his heart. The two quickly became familiar with each other. Dai Yuehang wasn't as serious as he looked from the outside, and unlike his silent brother Dai Huobin, he was much more entertaining. During the journey, he shared a few interesting stories about his assignments as a guardian, opening Hui Yu Hao's eyes to the larger world. After all, traveling 10,000 miles was better than reading 10,000 books. Hui Yu Hao began to recognize that he simply knew too little about the world. When compared to the entire Doluo continent, he was still a piece of white paper which only had an outline of a drawing sketched on it. The swift journey lasted all the way till midday before they stopped to rest. The students from the inner courtyard all had normal expressions, and their breathing was only slightly hurried at most. However, other than Hikaitu, who'd flown the entire journey with the assistance of a soul tool, the other three soul ancestors from the outer courtyard were drenched with sweat. Jiang Nan Nan was an agility type soul master, and she had a nimble and agile body. As a result, she was left in a slightly better state. Though her sweat dripped from her body, her clothes weren't drenched. However, the assault type Bei Bei and the defense type Xu Sansha were left in a miserable state. This was especially true for Xu Sansha. He was the heaviest of the four, and he left a huge mark of water when he landed on the ground. Hui Yu Hao, show off some of your abilities. Ma Xiaodao put Wang Dong down, then turned towards Hui Yu Hao, ah. Show what off? Hui Yu Hao asked, astonished. Ma Xiaodao laughed. What else? Food, of course. I don't think everyone here knows this, but at the very start, he sold roasted fish by the entrance to the academy every night to pay off his school fees. Right, right. I approve. You how's the best at this? Shu Sancha, who was panting violently on the ground, raised his hands and feet. His appearance looked somewhat comical. Bei Bei laughed, you really look like an overturned tortoise. It's no wonder you're the Xuan Wu turtle. Simple. Elder Xian suddenly appeared by Hu Yu Hao's side, and the latter was startled the moment he opened his mouth, Xiao Dao, you're in charge of lighting a fire. Dai Yueheng, Chen Zifeng, I'll give you a task. Go catch some fish, the more the better. Ling Luo Chen, 1111, go catch some wild game. Gong Yang Mo, go follow them. Yao Haoshuan hurriedly raised his chest to volunteer himself. Elder Xian, what about me? Elder Xian glared at him unhappily, you? Just stay there obediently. Do you think this old man will eat something that a bastard like you spits out? Actually, it's very clean. Yao Haoshuan said flatteringly, if you don't want to stay hungry, quickly get to work. Hu Yu Hao, you're the chef today. Everyone else, go find some charcoal. Don't just laze around. As he spoke, Elder Xian sauntered over to Hu Yu Hao, then whispered, Is the roasted fish you make really delicious? Hu Yu Hao scratched his head. It should be quite decent. Elder Xian nodded, 
then this old man will stay hungry for a bit to try your work. If I'm not satisfied, humph humph, I'll make you wear tiny shoes in the academy. This, Hui Yu Hao didn't know whether to laugh or to cry at seeing Elder Xian's expression. The latter seemed as though the heavens and the earth didn't matter compared to food. It had to be said that the elites of Shrek Academy were absolutely impressive at completing tasks. Within a mere 15 minutes, a sufficient amount of firewood was placed in front of Hui Yu Hao, who'd built a temporary stove by using the rocks around him. After a few more moments, Gong Yangmo, 1111, and Ling Luo Chen returned with two hares, two pheasants, and even a plump deer in tow. Start, start. Elder Xian waved his bottle gourd at Hu Yu Hao, signaling for the latter to start. Currently, Elder Xian looked like a gluttonous child. He wasn't even drinking his alcohol as he squatted beside Hu Yu Hao, waiting anxiously. Furthermore, he would even glare viciously at the others who were swallowing their saliva, as if he were claiming the area around Hu Yu Hao as his own. At this moment, Dai Yueheng and Chen Zifeng returned. From a distance, the two of them were able to smell the fragrance that came from Hu Yu Hao's stove. They were greatly astonished at Hu Yu Hao, who was busily working his skill in a familiar manner. He's only a second year student, which means that he isn't even 13. Just how is he this good at cooking? They'd brought back the fish, and Chen Zifeng had even fashioned his outer shirt into a pocket that contained a clump of mushrooms. The delicate mushrooms even contained a few traces of last night's dew, and their fresh and tender surface resembled the skin of a young girl. Xu Sancha let out a muffled laugh with his hand covering his mouth. Senior Yao actually called Elder Xian a gay dude. Isn't he just waiting for a calamity to befall him? Bei Bei nodded in agreement. Right? The gay dude's clearly you. Bullshit, this brother of yours only likes girls. I like girls with big butts. Xu Sancha said indignantly. However, he didn't expect to see Jiang Nanan's murderous eyes again after he spoke. She humped angrily, then left to the side, fuck. Bei Bei, this old man wants to fight with you. Xu Sancha ran towards Bei Bei, red in the face, then you'd better not think of eating my junior brother's roasted meat. Bei Bei said calmly. Xu Sanchi's hand was about to touch Bei Bei's body, but he instantly stopped. He angrily stayed his hand. I'm gonna take care of you once I'm done eating. Bei Bei, do you know what I hate most about you? Bei Bei shook his head in a very serious manner. How is a man supposed to know what a pig is thinking? You, Xu Sancha had no choice, but to stay indignant due to Bei Bei's threat. This old man hates the fact that you keep spouting bullshit with an innocent look on your face. You're clearly an evil bastard. I really don't know why Xiao Yue likes you. Bei Bei instantly replied, because mine's bigger. Bullshit. Xu Sancha immediately rose to his feet. Is yours as big as this daddy's? Bei Bei raised his index and middle fingers towards Xu Sancha. First off, I won't compare myself to shelled peanuts. Afterwards, he put down his index finger, which left only his middle finger extended. Second, I was referring to my age. I can't take it anymore. Xu Sancha finally bared his fangs and pounced towards Bei Bei. However, it was at that exact instant that Hu Yu Hao's voice distracted him, the rabbit's done. To a human, being ripped apart by five horses was definitely one of the most miserable tortures they could suffer. However, the most appalling tragedy that could occur to two wild rabbits was being divided amongst ten or so people. The instant that Hu Yu Hao spoke, the two rabbits were torn apart and scattered. This was a classic example of there being too many wolves, yet too little meat. The funniest thing that Hu Yu Hao took away from this was the fact that his seniors even had to compete with each other in terms of strength while eating. Ma Xiaodao was the strongest of the lot, and was also the quickest. As such, she was also the first person to make her move. Dai Yueheng wasn't much slower than her, thus the two were able to split one of the roasted rabbits amongst themselves. The rest of them, on the other hand, had to split a single rabbit amongst them. Xu Sancha was once again the most miserable of the lot. As an extremely slow defense type soul master, he was only able to obtain a rabbit head. At that moment, a problem arose due to Hu Yu Hao, Wang Dong, and Xiao Xiao's cultivation levels. However, there was a more pragmatic solution to this, which was relatively simple. That solution was for them to let someone else bring them into the sky, then let that person fly using the flying type soul tool. Of course, it was somewhat simpler for Wang Dong, as he could fly in the first place. It wouldn't be too hard for him to rely on the radiant butterfly goddess wings to rise into the air, then fly forwards with the flying type soul tool. 
Thus, the real problem lay with Hui Yuhao and Xiao Xiao. He Kai Tu didn't use the flying type sole tool that Dai Yuaheng had brought over, as he'd brought one himself. Furthermore, his one was much more compact and delicate. His was only half the size of the Star Luo Empires, while its wings were somewhat smaller. Despite this, it was clearly more effective. Not only had he brought one for himself, he'd also brought one for Hui Yuhao as well. Wang Yang said, Students from the outer courtyard, go practice using your flying type soul tools for a bit. Students from the inner courtyard, you're responsible for teaching and protecting them. Dai Yuaheng had originally planned to help Hui Yuhao, but he now had no choice but to extinguish this thought when he saw Hikai Tu helping the latter get used to the delicate flying type soul tool made by the soul tool department. As Hikai Tu helped Hui Yuhao put on the flying type soul tool, he said, Yu Hao, once you reach a higher level of cultivation, our teacher will teach you how to make a flying type soul tool. The soul tools made by our soul tool department only need their users to have three or more soul rings, and they are more economical with their use of soul power. However, these aren't the most advanced types of flying type soul tools on the market. Supposedly, the Sun Moon Empire has managed to add a special gem that's capable of storing and replenishing soul power to their flying type soul tools. Even a one-ringed soul master is able to use them once it's stored enough soul power. Hui Yuhao was astonished. Can soul power even be stored in a soul tool? He Kai Tu smiled bitterly. Exactly. Currently, this is the greatest gap between us and the Sun Moon Empire. However, it isn't that easy to complete this piece of research. The Sun Moon Empire wants to allow ordinary people to use soul tools, however if a day like that truly comes, a great war would be inevitable. This video will end here. Thank you for watching.